Okay, so let's say we want to simplify or reduce this fraction without using a calculator. Well, a lot of you listening to this video right now probably could figure this out, but if you really want to make this problem easy, you want to do this thing first. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our problem. We have 231 over 600, and you can simplify this fraction, i.e. this fraction is reducible. And again, no calculators to help you out. So if you have the answer, go ahead and put that into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll talk about how to make this problem very easy. This is uh, pretty important stuff, and you definitely want to know this. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, well, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. Okay, so one of the things that you have to do in math is reduce fractions, i.e., write the fraction in its simplest form. So it's not appropriate to leave a fraction, let's suppose, like 100 over 200. Now, if you give this to your math teacher, they're not going to like that that much. Uh, so it's not like an optional thing to reduce or simplify a fraction. So in this case, obviously, this fraction would be equal to 1 half. So in math, uh, whether it's arithmetic and or algebra, you have to do a lot of simplifying or reducing of fractions. And you're going to want to know this one thing. Of course, this is the kind of main topic of this video. But let's go ahead and take a look at the answer. If we were to reduce this fraction, the uh, correct fraction is going to be this, 77 over 200. Okay, so how did you do? Well, if you got this right, that is fantastic. Again, hopefully you didn't use a calculator, but I want to give you a happy face and A plus a 100%. And of course, we'll talk about this super secret thing, which really is not a big secret. And a lot of you uh, probably could have used this little technique to make this problem as easy as possible. And what we're going to be talking about here is divisibility rules, specifically divisibility by three. Okay, so this is something that you definitely want to know, and it's going to make our life a lot easier when it comes to reducing fractions. Okay, so here we have 231 over 600. So let's suppose um, you're looking at this problem, and let's say you did have a calculator. Well, how are we going to approach this problem? Well, you're going to start thinking of different numbers that uh, you know go into this number and this number. So 600, you're like, okay, I know this is divisible by 6, so maybe you're going to take 231 divided by 6, and you're going to start checking numbers. Now, this is not so fun, uh, especially if you don't have a calculator, because you have to do a lot of division, and of course, you'll uh, test numbers that don't work. So we want to be smart about this and try to make this problem as easy as possible. So this is why you want to remember your divisibility rules. Now, there is a good number of divisibility rules, and uh, this is stuff that you learned way back in primary or elementary school. I'm only going to be talking about the rule for three. If you want to uh, learn the other rules, I'll give you some uh, suggestions. As a matter of fact, I have other YouTube videos that cover other divisibility rules. And if you need to improve in basic math, I'll give you uh, some suggestions as we get into this video. But let's talk about this rule for three, because if you're going to remember uh, some divisibility rules, and oftentimes a lot of people forget a lot of the rules because there's rules for um, you know different numbers, but you don't want to forget the rule for three. This is such a useful rule, and it's easy to remember. Okay, so how does this work? Well, a number is divisible by three. Matter of fact, let's just make sure we understand this term, divisibility. So this means that a number can be divided, in this case, by three without a remainder. Okay, so let's take a look at some examples of numbers that we know that are divisible by three. And then, of course, we will learn the rule and apply the rule in our fraction problem. Okay, so for example, six, uh, we can divide six by three without a remainder. Of course, the answer is two. 27 we can divide by 3. The answer is 9. Again, no remainder. And of course, we can divide 30 by 3. And the answer is 10. No remainder. So when you don't have a remainder, that is what divisibility is all about. In other words, that number is divisible by that number. Okay, so let's go ahead and talk about the rule. The rule is super easy. 
All right, now here, six, hopefully you can see that six is divisible by um, uh, three, right? Because, you know, six, uh, we just go like this. All right, six divisible by three. In other words, if you had a fraction and it was six over three, well, you kind of just expect it to know that six is divisible by three. So this rule doesn't work for single digit numbers. And there's only a few single digit numbers that you have to concern yourself by for divisibility uh, by three, right? Which is three, six, and nine. So I think most of us out there know that these numbers are divisible by three. But how about bigger numbers like this, like 27 and 30? Now these are pretty easy numbers as well, but uh, I'm gonna use these two simple numbers to illustrate the uh, rule for three when it comes to divisibility. Okay, so it's super easy. All we have to do is look at the digits. So we have two and seven, and the rule is the following. If the sum of the digits is itself divisible by three, then the entire number is divisible by three. So the digits of 27 is two and seven. So two plus seven, of course, is nine, and we already know that nine is divisible by three. So because the sum of the digits here is divisible by three, the entire number is divisible by three. And of course, we can see this here with 30, because we have, what are the digits? Well, it's three and zero, so three plus zero, of course, is three, and three is divisible by three, making 30 divisible by three. So this is a great rule and a very, very handy rule when it comes to reducing and or simplifying fractions. And even if you have a calculator, you know, knowing that something is divisible by three can really, really help you out. Okay, so let's go ahead and start to apply this in our problem. All right, so here's our fraction. We have 231 over 600. Now, uh, again, you know, you can test different divisibility rules, but 231, that's kind of an oddball number. I say, well, you know what, I'm gonna test and see if this is divisible by three, because maybe you're looking at 600 and you already know in your brain that 600 can be divided by three. So let's go ahead and add the digits up here. So we have two plus three plus one. So if the sum of the digits, again, is divisible by three, in this case, two plus three is five, plus one is six, six is divisible by three. Well, this entire number right here is divisible by three. And 600, uh, hopefully you know that it, uh, this number already is divisible by three without having to check it, but you could check it, right? So 600, what is the uh, sum of the digits? It's six plus zero plus zero. So that is, of course, gonna be six. So this number here, both of these numbers is divisible by three. So that means that we can divide each uh, number here, the numerator and uh, denominator, by three and simplify this fraction. So this is a start. Now, it doesn't mean that you are finished um, reducing, but you're going to kind of make this problem easier to deal with. You're going to make this problem, uh, you know, smaller, if you will. So let's go ahead and divide 231 by three, and then we'll go ahead and continue the process of reducing this fraction. Okay, so old school arithmetic division here. Of course, this is everyone's favorite thing to do is to divide numbers without a calculator. So here's 231, we're dividing it by three. So does three go into two? Nope, does three go into 23? Yes, seven times, right? So seven times three is 21. Now we're gonna subtract 21 from 23. That is two. Does three go into two? No, we're gonna drop down to one. Does three go into 21? Yes, seven times. So we're all done. So three times seven, three times seven is 231. So we wanna think of our numerator now in terms of factors, okay? So 231 is the same thing as three times 77. All right, so let's go ahead and divide um, 600 by three. And a lot of you can just do the mental math here, but before we do that, I'm gonna quickly ask you to subscribe to this channel. Now, hopefully you're gaining some value out of this. Some of you are already subscribers, and if you are, thank you so much. But here's the thing, I am really trying to reach as many people as I possibly can to help them in math, all right? So many people are down on themselves when it comes to math. They're like, hey, I'm bad at math, I don't understand this stuff. Well, everybody, okay, at least in my experience, well, I'll say 99.9% .9 of people, unless they're, unless you really have some serious, serious kind of obstacle, you can learn math. And even in those cases, everyone can improve in mathematics. So you got to get the right encouragement. And uh, really what you need is a belief in yourself and great math instruction. So if you want to improve in math and uh, learn mathematics from me, well, check out my main uh, math courses. You'll find links to those in the description of this video. 
Now, I did indicate that I would give you some suggestions on the other divisibility rules if this uh, is something that interests you. Check out my Math Foundations course. That's a basic math review. I go over per, uh, place value, fractions, percent, all this kind of basic math stuff, basic mathematical operations to include divisibility rules. Now, if you want to take it a step further, check out my Math Skills Rebuilder course because I teach you all of that plus a ton of algebra, geometry, trigonometry, and some other things in there as well. Okay, so let's get back to this problem now. So we got 600, we can divide this by three. I'm not even gonna show you the math because I could uh, pretty much know that most of you are like, okay, three times two is six, so three times 200 is gonna be 600. So 600 divided by three is 200. So we wanna think of 600 as three times 200. You see, when uh, we talk about reducing fractions, and this is actually uh, something to uh, review real quick. So if I have 10 over 20 and I want to reduce this fraction, you want to break up the numerator and denominator into factors. So we know 10 here is the same thing as 1 times 10 and 20 is the same thing as 2 times 10. Now if you can uh, identify like factors between the numerator and denominator, you can cross cancel them. Okay, so that's what we want to do. We want to factor this. Of course, we're looking, the way you factor is to divide this number, okay, into two or more numbers. And so now you have factors, and what remains is the simplified uh, fraction. So 10 over 20 um, can be reduced or simplified to one half. And again, the process is we're uh, writing these numbers in terms of its factors, looking, hoping for these like factors that we could cross cancel. But we don't know if we have like factors until we factor the numerator and denominator. So again, that's what we're gonna be thinking of 600 as three times uh, 200, and of course, uh, 231 as three times 77, or what was that, let me see here, go back, uh, yes, three times 77. Okay, so hopefully you got the right idea. Now let's go ahead and take a look at the rest of the prompt. Okay, so 231 over 600, we use the divisibility rule for three, and so this is our problem. We're like, okay, three times 77, over three times 200. So right away we can get rid of threes. So we're very happy about that. And now here is our uh, fraction that remains. Now what we want to do is to continue factoring the numerator and denominator, but that doesn't mean that the factors of these numbers are, we're gonna find like factors, but you still have to kind of do the work. But the good news is that this number should be very easy for those of you out there to factor. And uh, if you are up to speed, on multiplication by 11, you might be saying to yourself, wait a minute, 77 is uh, seven times 11, right? So we're talking about basic multiplication things here. But in the meantime, at least we got this problem down to this, 77 over 200. So let's go ahead and start to uh, see if we can find some more like factors. So 77 over 200, again, 77 is the same thing as seven times 11, right? So seven times 11 is 77, and most of you are probably pretty good in multiplication. But right off the bat, when you got, we have seven and 11, a lot of you might be, you know, kind of looking at this and saying, hmm, I don't think any of these numbers are gonna go into 200 without a remainder. And if you have to, you can uh, test, uh, you know, you could kind of take 200 divided by seven, that's not gonna work, and you can also uh, try 11, that's not gonna work as well. Now what you could do, okay, if you don't wanna do the division, is factor out 200. So in other words, you can go two times 100, and then 100 is the same thing as uh, 10 times 10. So you can kind of break this down like this, and you can see we are dealing with prime numbers, so you're not gonna get any more like factors. So unfortunately, although we can factor the numerator and denominator more, we don't have any like factors to uh, cross cancel, so we're left with this as our final answer. Okay, so you know the great thing about math is that it does build upon itself. And a lot of people think that, oh boy, you know, arithmetic, basic math, you know, this is, this is boring stuff. I like to do algebra. Well, in algebra, you do the same thing. The process is that it, um, the process that we use to uh, simplify or reduce a fraction is the exact same process that we use to simplify a variable or rational expressions in algebra. So that's why it's important to really strengthen your basic math skills. And if you need, if you need help in basic math, then definitely check out my Math Foundations or my Math Skills Rebuilder course. Okay, so hopefully this little video helps you out. And if that's the case, don't forget to like and subscribe. And with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. 
thank you for your time and have a great day.